Fox News invited on Eric Prince, the former owner of Blackwater, to try and resurrect the image of Blackwater. Few media outlets are talking about this morning. U.S. military contractors sent packing from their post in Afghanistan because apparently the Afghans have everything under control. Really? Haven't we seen this movie before, like in Iraq? Eric Prince is the founder and former CEO of Blackwater, once a top U.S. military contractor and author of this book now in a paperback, Eric Prince, The Civilian Warriors, The Inside Story of Blackwater. So, Eric, how do you feel? How should we feel about turning Afghanistan over to the Afghanis? We have 24,000 troops here, there. We have 1,000 by 2016. Are they ready? Uh, Afghanistan is going to have much of the same problem that Iraq did. Um, the Taliban are already controlling a, a number of the provinces, and uh, the amount of area that the government of Afghanistan controls continually shrinks. I'm afraid that within a couple of years after U.S. forces are out, it'll look much like Iraq. And, and effectively, the, the president of Iraq will be basically the mayor of Kabul. Four Blackwater guards responsible for the deaths of 14 Iraqi civilians, wounding 17 others. Uh, they have con been convicted uh, for what they say is that crime. What's your reaction to that? Uh, you know, the government's now one for two in this case. Uh, the first case they, they tried that was thrown out for prosecutorial misconduct. The guys still have a lot of options for their appeals, and I'm sure they'll exercise them. Uh, and the, the last chapter on this isn't written yet. Are they innocent? Uh, I'd say it's a highly, highly political context. You know, they, remember, these are uh, military veterans that served well in the U.S. military, in that, many of them in that theater. I'm, I think if they'd been in uniform that day, this would not have been an issue. Exactly. Uh, Eric, how do you feel about Eric Holder evidently having a reception in his office after the prosecution was successful of, of convicting your four guys? Like I said, this has been a highly politicized case. The government spent tens of millions of dollars going after these guys. I think it makes a good case for what we request in the first place for contractor accountability right. is the UCMJ to try them in a military court, not try them in a civilian court seven years and 7,000 miles away from the edge of battle. Right. And you believe and you write in your book that uh, contractors are the scapegoat in this whole and both these wars. Uh, I think so. You know, the anti-war left went after the troops in the Vietnam War. This time they go after contractors. Yeah, contractors are the scapegoat. It's not that the over a dozen people that were killed in Nisor Square. It's not that uh, they're the victims. It's not that uh, they're the ones that went through hardship. It's that the contractors, the poor contractors, and the anti-war left. I mean, these guys, they went after our poor troops in Vietnam, and now they're going after the contractors today. Well, maybe we went against the war in Vietnam because there were millions of civilians that were killed in Vietnam, and we used Agent Orange and Napalm on villages that had innocent people in them, and these things are well documented. This was in the Pentagon Papers. It's a matter of public record. We know the war crimes that were committed when we were in Vietnam. It wasn't our fight in the first place. We shouldn't have gone there in the first place. The argument was, well, if we don't go fight communism in Vietnam, it's going to come to Nebraska next Tuesday. It was a stupid argument then. It's a stupid argument now. That's why the left was against it back then. And when it comes to contractors, of course we're against military contractors. What are you, stupid? Who would be for military contractors? There's a reason why there's another name for them. Mercenary armies. You know what they call them? If you were to see a group similar to Blackwater in a place like Somalia, you know what they'd be called? Warlord factions. Little private armies. Because they're not accountable. That's the problem with them. Now, this is the first time we've ever gotten accountability with this situation because these guys were found guilty. But notice, he goes right into playing the victim card, right into, oh, we are the oppressed ones. Meanwhile, these guys were on trial for murder and manslaughter because they rolled into the middle of a square in Iraq in broad daylight and started gunning down innocent people. And by the way, that's been proven now in a court of law. So the idea that this is some left-wing conspiracy and I'm giving code pink talking points is nonsense. We know as a matter of fact that they're guilty of it and they're going to spend some time in jail as they should. And he's trying to get rid of uh, accountability by saying, oh no, let's use a military tribunal. Let's go through some other form where we can do a kabuki theater dog and pony show and act like, oh, we had hearings and they're innocent and we're going to let them go. I mean, even our troops don't like the Blackwater people and for good reason. These are people who got paid $100,000, $120,000 a year to essentially, in many ways, do the same job that our troops were doing and these guys were way too aggressive and way too crazy and they weren't the chain of command was very loose i mean we've done stories about how people in the military were threatened by people in blackwater and then uh, what happened 
the, the government took the side of the Blackwater people and shipped out the military people. This is a dangerous group, man. And also, Eric Prince, the guy who you just saw talking right there, he's uh, well known as being uber-Christian. Super Christian guy with a super Christian army fighting in the uh, Muslim holy land and killing civilians. Yeah, that's not going to breed hatred and uh, embolden the enemy even more. And then notice, the beginning of that, uh, Fox News just flat out advocated for staying in Afghanistan. They were like, yeah, see what, what happened, you know what's going to happen when we leave, the same thing that happened in Iraq. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, but even if that does happen, why is it our business to stay there? For fuck's sake, we've been there since 2001. How much longer do you want to be there? Five years? Ten years? A hundred years? Seven thousand years? Do you just want to permanently occupy that place? I mean, that's basically what they're arguing for. They're acting like it's common sense that obviously we should stay in Afghanistan. Do you know that only 17% of the American people want to stay in Afghanistan? That means everybody. It's Democrats, it's independents, it's Republicans who say, all right, enough is enough, let's get the fuck out of there. And even if it does go to shit, it's not our business to get involved over there. The original reason we went in there was to get Osama bin Laden and to get Al-Qaeda. Guess what? Mission accomplished. Osama bin Laden's dead, there's less than 100 Al-Qaeda operatives in Afghanistan right now. For us to stay there any longer should be a violation of international law, should be a violation of our own law because we achieved our goals already. It's almost like Fox News and Blackwater and everybody, they're taking the mask off and they're just flat out saying, we would like to permanently occupy places and we would like to be just like old school Imperial Britain.